Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. Welcome to part four of the ephemera making series. So in this video, we will be using one 12 by 12 sheet of paper to create six pockets. So I'm going to show you what it looks like inside. Let's do this one because we will be making this one together today. So you've got one pocket here and then second here, third pocket here. Then we've got one large pocket, so a fourth pocket. And then the fifth pocket, also a large pocket, and then the sixth pocket at the back here. And then I also glued this on the front so that this gives me a seventh pocket. So your imagination can take you all sorts of ways. This is what it looks like before embellishing or decorating. Um, so you can just see visually one pocket here, two, three, four, five, six. So I've got my instructions here. We'll go through everything step by step. I will show you two different ways. I'll show you a sewing option and a non-sewing option as well. So you can decide what you prefer. The way that I would use these is uh, in, a, in a journal or as part of a journal collection. Uh, it can just be on its own like a little ephemera folder. It can be part of happy mail or card making or all sorts of things. Your imagination really is the only limit I guess to this and and the point is to have fun creating. So without further ado, I think let's begin. Before we begin constructing, let's talk about your choice of paper. So you can use, uh, you can choose paper that's double sided like this, or it can be a single sided paper. So most definitely it can be uh, white on one side and then patterned on the other side. Um, so it's quite nice to use paper which has uh, quite a lot of pattern on one side and then not much on the other side you want it to contrast once it's folded you want to be able to see the pockets so perhaps something like this with two different colors is quite nice this will also work even though it's in the same tones but it would also work uh, what will not work is choosing paper that's directional so for example this paper has an image here so then you might have you know as it will be folded it might be upside down or it might be cut through or so it's easiest just to not have paper that has any images or any writing like this one's got hip hip hooray and it's directional so this is the right way up and then when I start I mean it's it, you know it might not bother you but it's just something to keep in mind that when you're folding your uh, words or your images will be either upside down or it, it, they will go every which way so in my opinion I thought it was best to use something like this it's non-directional and I mean even this one is kind of there's some writing here it's kind of directional I guess so this bird is pointing up and this bird so it is but it, it's not the main like look at this plant it's kind of going this way so anyway uh, I think it will work even though this one does seem to be a little bit directional so let's stop blabbering and start making shall we here we go my instructions are here this of course again is going to look a lot more complicated on here than it actually is but uh, everything will be, if you don't quite understand what I'm doing over here, you will understand it here and vice versa. Let's begin. So first thing you want to do, you want to cut off that extra bit, which I already did. Um, you know, those bits that come down the bottom. So you want to cut that off. And now we have a 12 by 12 sheet of paper. It doesn't have to be 12 by 12. It can be any uh, size as long as it's square. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is fold diagonally. So here we go. I might not be in frame the whole time, but I'll do my best. So I will try to really have all of my edges meet nicely. And in most cases, they don't always meet perfectly. And I'll show you once I do this, because I'm sure they won't meet perfectly. But once I fold it diagonally, I just want to crease really well. And now you will see, let me just show you up close. This corner, it's perfect, perfect. And then you see over here, there's a little bit of non-perfection here. And I sometimes if it's quite a lot, I will trim it down a little bit. But in this case, I'm just going to leave it. 
also the thinner your paper the better it will fold so it's probably easier to work with thinner paper it, this will not work with cardstock it will never close properly all right so now we've done that and the next thing we want to do is along the folded edge which is this edge here that's the folded edge up here we want to measure five inches and five eighths from the end towards the middle on both sides so I'm going to do that now okay so I measured five and five eighths there and then here as well and now what we want to do is fold right there so I usually use my scoreboard I would just score there and then fold but because no uh, not everyone has a scoreboard I'm just going to do it on camera without the scoreboard so I'll just move this out of the way what I do is so see my mark over here I put my nail right into that mark and fold so I fold it there and I'm holding it there and now I want to make sure that this here is aligned I don't want it to be like that or like that I want it to be perfectly aligned hold it in place and then crease here so really I mean you can do this without a scoreboard it doesn't really matter and then let's do the other side and now I'm going to score and if you don't have a bone folder just your scissors will do so as I'm folding away I'm scoring everything just to make sure that it's got a nice crisp fold and now we need to open up the square so that's step three open up the square here we go it's opened up and refold along the score lines so remember these they're the score lines so we open up the square and we are refolding along the score lines here we go that's done and now we need to turn it upside down and we need to score the triangles see these triangles sticking out we need to score them and bring them in so once again if you have a scoreboard you can just go ahead and do that this part this is how I do it I align my ruler right at that uh, point there and align that point with this point here and then I just flip it up like this and then score And now on the other side so that's that done okay let's move on to the next section I'll have these side by side for you later on so you can take a screenshot and we've done this and now we need to flip around again to the front and then fold into fold the middle and crease well and I'm just about to tell you what you're going to find here once you get to this step and you fold you will find that it's it seems like there's extra paper and it can't fold flat so if it's flat over here then it's kind of you know feels like it's not right see it feels like there's extra paper that's just because the paper that I'm using has a bit of thickness to it if you're using a thinner paper you wouldn't have that problem so I don't try to refold or anything I just leave it as it is because once we fill in the pockets and everything like that it, it all looks beautiful in the end so but that's one thing that you might find it in this step and it might get on your nerves I'm just warning you about that okay so now we want to open up and make sure that the bottom flat of the triangle is on top so we want it to look like an upside down envelope so that's the top flap this is the bottom flap or you can have it whichever way you want whichever way you think is going to look good I might do it this way because remember before I was talking about directional non-directional so this will be this will be my bottom flap okay so now uh, 
this is where we're actually gluing and securing so we can have those pockets so the first i'm going to do two options so we'll do glue only option and then we'll do the sewing option so sewing option is my favorite but if you don't have a sewing machine there are things that you can do so we're we are going to use glue for this step so we want to open up the flaps completely so I know this is my bottom one this is my top one and I want to apply glue along the middle crease on the top so I see this pick this little drawing here so we're just applying on the middle top crease and I'm going to apply one little little line of glue okay and close it fold down okay next thing we're going to do is fold the bottom flap up before we add any glue and we want to mark where they are meeting so I'm just going to draw a line they meet right there I'm just going to draw a little line I'll show you just a little line right in there where they meet and now I'm going to open it up And I've got my little lines drawn here. Okay, we're going on to the next step. We've opened the bottom flap. And now I need to apply glue from those little lines that I drew. And down here. It will all make sense when, once it's done. So, I'm not applying glue down here. I'm only applying it on top of the top flap. So when applying glue... Make sure that none of it is seeping down onto the bottom because that will close this pocket shut. It won't be a pocket anymore. So we just want to apply a little bit of glue or double-sided tape just from that line that we've marked all the way down to the point. Just a little bit of glue. We don't want it seeping. Maybe I should hold it this way so I'm not confusing you uh, with it being upside down. So just a little bit of glue. And now before we close it, we want to uh, apply glue along the middle crease on the bottom flap. So I drew the thing here. So see, we've applied that one. And now we're just going to apply it a little bit on the middle. And close and now really before we continue with anything I need to let this dry because I will be adding so I don't know if you can now see that we have created a pocket up here so that's glued there and then we've got glued there so that's a pocket that's a pocket that's a pocket that's a pocket. Anyway, we'll leave this to dry. While this is drying, I am going to uh, do the second option, which is sewing. So I just want to show you on this one, there's quite a bit sticking out. So I might just trim that off a little bit. All right, so we're doing the second option, which is sewing. So we want to fold the top flap down, fold the bottom flap over the top, just like an upside down envelope. And now we are marking. We need to mark where they are crossing. So I'm just going to draw a little line here that I can erase later. And now we need to open the bottom flap. And we're just going to apply glue here. I can't sew there because then I, I would I would sew right through and then it would destroy my pocket. So I'm just going to apply a little bit of glue from the marked dots to the point over here and close. So I just want to make sure that there's no glue that seeped out. No, perfect. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is go take it to my sewing machine 
and sew right through the middle here just put it right through my sewing machine so I've sewn right through the middle and I'm going to trim these off all right now final couple of steps so we want to flip our envelope around and now we want to see these triangles just like we did on the on the other one we want to score them down I'll just move this out of the way so let me just mention before we continue to the next step there's one thing that you just need to take note of before we glue the triangles down so I just want to show you um, and first I'm gonna fold this before I continue just have a nice fold and see even with the sewing like it's still it feels like it's too much paper but that's just because of the the paper and how much folding we've done and everything okay before you sew your flap you want to make sure where your top is so I'll just show you my mistake this is the first one that I did so I've decorated everything I've put my tags in and then I opened up and realized that it's upside down my pockets are upside down which still worked okay it's still fine I've put some uh, paper clips and stuff like that but when you're at this stage before you're gluing the these down you want to make sure that your your pockets or th your thing whatever this is called is turned the right way up so here is our pocket so this is the right way up it has to be like that upside down envelope you know so that means we're gluing this bottom flap down so uh so we're creating a pocket up here so uh, before gluing this down you might want to decorate here you know if you want if you're going to be sticking something here you might want to do it before you're gluing this flap down so for example you can see here I've glued this little piece of I cut out from a book and I created actually another pocket here you can see that this is overlapping over this so I actually didn't glue the pockets down until I started decorating. So I think that's what I might do here. I won't be gluing this down until I decide what I'm going to do here. So now what I'm going to do is uh, I will decorate these and then I will speed up that process. Uh, and then I'll come back and have a chat to you and I'll pop these up side by side so you can take a, a screenshot of the instructions. All right, let's decorate. So I decided to create another little pocket here up the top. So this will be my little pocket. So I'm just applying a little bit of glue on the sides. On the three sides. This one's got a bit of a retro feel, so I want to use maybe something from here, from my uh, Paper Lovers book. So this part is for I really like this so so I'm just wrapping a little bit of cord just around it's not functional it's not actually holding anything in place but I think it looks really beautiful so I've just wrapped it around and now I'm going to tie a bow and you'll see you'll see here I've added uh, some beads and I think it looks so beautiful so I'm just going to for, for time you know saving a bit of time I'm not going to add any beads onto this one okay so here is the first one done so I've got a little tag in this pocket and then I so this one's actually got seven pockets because I've included 
the extra pocket here and we could make it into eight you know by including another pocket here but i didn't want to go overboard so um we've got a tag there tag there and there's the tags here i've put some paper clips in there i was thinking of hanging a charm off it but then i couldn't be bothered looking for a charm i've got some little uh, papers here and then you know i wanted all of this bit sticking out so um Otherwise, another idea would be if you don't have bits sticking out, you can actually do a closure. So let's just say, for example, that this isn't here. And you can have like a twine binding closure, you know, something like that. I mean, I could do it even with the bits sticking out, but that's just an idea. And then you, it would be closed. It would be kept closed. Um, and then here I've just got some extra bits and pieces, some papers, and then I've got a tag at the back there. So that one's done. I'm going to do the other one now. Okay, and here is the second one that I made. So I've applied another pocket, just put a little bit of a um, an image from a book that I ripped out, and then just ink the edges, put that on top. And then uh, I've got a little tag in here, just really simple. I use twine binding. Uh, because just to tie it all in, you know, there's a little bit of black here, there's some black dots there, and then that's why I use the twine binding with the black. And then over here, same thing, we've got the tags, and then there's a little envelope in here, and then I've got some journaling spots, something like this, you know, like little journaling spots in here, and some paper, and then over here, I've just stuffed it with little things like a you know it doesn't really matter i guess what i put in there but just pieces of paper a little envelope just like a little ephemera pack folder that's what this is the way that i would use these is as part of a purchase for example you know with a journal it can come with a journal it can be in happy mail you can gift it to a friend you can have a letter in there uh, it can be like a little card that they open up and then they find little treasures inside so Lots of uh, interesting ways to use it up. Let me know what you think of this project and how you're planning on using it. So what I'm going to do now is put those instructions up side by side. Here we go. If you want to take a screenshot, that's the first two pages of the instructions. So you can see like these instructions look a bit full on, but once you actually do it, once you do it, you do it the first time, it will make a lot more sense. And then you do it the second time, you won't need instructions. It will just, you'll know it off by heart. Okay, so here is the second. So hopefully seeing the instructions and watching me do it, hopefully it will all make sense. Thank you so much for being here with me today. I really hope that you enjoyed this project. Please let me know what you think and I will see you in my next video. Bye!